All right, so this is a tutorial showing you how to create a few figures using the program Ocean Data View. And so some of the figures that Ocean Data View can create uh, look like this. So really, really aesthetically pleasing figures, particularly if you are in the field of oceanography, marine biology, or anything that plots uh, data from the ocean. So to get started, let's actually download the software. So you're going to uh, go to the Ocean Data View website, which is this first hit here. You're going to go up to software and download. And then for this program, you are going to need to register um, for non-commercial use. So this is uh, for if you are a scientist conducting research, if these are figures that are going to go into publications, um, you will register at this link here. They will send you an email where you can set up an account. Uh, you'll log in with the credentials that you specify. And then from there, you can download the data. Once the software is done downloading, you can open it and it should present a window like this, where it's just a blank space. The first thing that we're going to do is learn how to actually input some data. And so this is, uh, a data sheet that I have of a few CTD casts that were taken off of the coast of Costa Rica. And so you can see that I have column names specified uh, in the first row. We also have latitudes and longitudes. Those are going to be essential for Ocean Data View to read your data. And then the variables. So we've got depth, we've got temperature, salinity, total pH corrected for depth, oxygen, as well as total alkalinity. Uh, and so once you have your data, you are going to save it at either as a comma separated file or as a text file, which is tab delimited. And so those are the two file types that Ocean Data View can read. So going back to Ocean Data View, you are going to go up to import and you're going to select ODV spreadsheet. Then what you're going to do is you're going to navigate to your data file. Uh, like I said before, it is going to be looking for tab delimited or comma separated files. So once you've selected your data sheet, it should pull up a window like this. Uh, make sure that you specify the correct separator. So for instance, this is a CSV file. So uh, comma separation is correct, as you can see in the data. Uh, you can also see that ODV has already pulled out the column labels. It's recognized that the first row um, are column headers as opposed to data. And so you just wanna make sure that it is doing that. Um, and if not, you can correct course, but it almost always does it correctly. So you can just hit okay. This window allows you to verify that Ocean Data View has correctly identified your data. And so, for instance, um, it is recognizing that the import variable of longitude is indeed the metadata variable longitude. Same with latitude. You can also see that it has pulled out the data variables. So we've got depth, we've got temperature, we've got salinity, pH, oxygen, and total alkalinity. But everything seems correct. The primary variable is set to depth. You want to keep it like that or change it to depth if it's set to something else. And then you can hit OK. Uh, you can name your collection something specific, uh, but everything else here can be left as default. And then again, this is just allowing you to um, make sure that everything is appropriately associated. So longitude is appropriately associated with the target meta variable longitude, same with latitude. Um, and then depth, temperature, everything else are going to be the actual data as opposed to metadata. And so we can hit OK. This is where you specify the data. So the depth is uh, appropriately associated, same with temperature, salinity, pH, oxygen, and total alkalinity. So everything is associated um, correctly. So then we can hit OK. We can hit OK again. And this is what you should be left with. You should be left with a global map um, with your CTD casts appropriately placed or your data variables appropriately placed. 
Like I said, the CTDs that we're looking at were taken off the coast of Costa Rica, and so we can actually see that they are correctly placed on the map here. Uh, this is just a really good way to check immediately if you've inputted your data, if you've input your data correctly. And so this is a bit hard to see, so we are going to right click anywhere on the map really, um, and we are going to hit auto zoom in. So the stations that are selected are going to be um, indicated by these little red crosshairs here. And so to get started, we are going to create um, our first ocean data view uh, plot. So we are going to start with the station window. So what I did was I went up to view. I went up to layout templates and I'm selecting one station window. So when you hit that, um, it should pull up a, um, a window like this. And so you can see in this little um, map here, which station is selected. Once you have a station selected of interest, um, you're not actually going to hit this plus up here. Don't be fooled by this. Um, you're actually going to hit um, shift and then the plus sign on your keyboard. Uh, and so what you'll get is actually a nice little depth profile here. So we are going to, again, select a different station. And we're, again, going to hit Shift Plus to add that station to the plot. And actually, we can go through and add all of the stations. And you'll see that they are input with their own symbology. And just for ease of comparison, you can see that they are um, also indicated with the same symbols on the map. So you can clearly see which station is indicated by what symbol. If you were to right click on this station map and you go to properties, you can make a few more adjustments. So once you're in this window, there's a few things you can do. You can change the color palette, uh, I typically just leave it as the typical Ocean Data View default palette. But if you go to display style, that is kind of what I want to show you. So you can change the symbol size here. You can make it smaller, you can make it larger, and you can kind of see how Ocean Data View gives you a sample of what that's going to look like on the left. So 18 is the default. So I'm going to make them just a little bit bigger. And then also I am going to make the line width just a little bit bigger as well. So I'm going to uh, change that to medium as opposed to very thin. And so uh, in order to have this apply to all of the data that are on your um, on your map right now, you're going to select this apply to all windows down at the bottom. And then you can hit OK. And you can see how that's changed things. If you ever find yourself just really disliking something, you can always go up here and hit undo um, or redo if you decide to do that as well. So I'm going to undo that, but just so you can see that that's an option. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we are going to uh, create a depth profile uh, using the section window. So I'm going to go to view again, layout templates, and then this selection here, one section window. And so what you're going to do here is you are actually going to go down to this map and you are going to hit manage section. Sorry, I right clicked on the map. I'm going to hit manage section and I'm going to define section. And so this is going to let you draw the section that you'd like plotted. So click on the map where you'd like the section to start. And then you can see that this is going to uh, allow you to draw um, a section here. So every time you'd like the line to bend, you're going to click again. 
So I'm going to exclude these two sections just because they're a little far afield. Uh, and I want the section to be as flat uh, in space as possible. So I'm going to go through that one, going to go through that one, these two. When you are done specifying your section, you are going to hit enter and that is going to uh, form that into a section. You can name it. Um, you can specify the section coordinate. I typically just leave it as distance because it's sort of an odd shape. Uh, and then also, if you have a bathymetry file um, to input, this is the time that you do it. So you can browse and you can input bathymetry. For this tutorial, I don't have bathymetry for this region, so I am just going to uh, hit no bathymetry for now. And you should get a window that looks like this. And you can see this is going down in depth and you can see all of the bottles that were triggered uh, during the CTD cast for the stations that are depicted. So what you're going to do is you're going to right click on this section. You are going to go to properties and we are going to uh, play around with some of these settings. And here you can select the data. So this is where you will select a different uh, variable if you'd like. So we can, for this instance, leave it as temperature, um, but you can select any of your variables to visualize. Uh, you will notice that Ocean Data View has recognized that depth should be reversed, as in it doesn't start uh, zero, it doesn't go from zero to 2000, it goes from 2000 to zero to visualize going down in depth. Uh, for the display style, this is where things get interesting. So you are going to, instead of plotting the original data as it's now, we want a gridded field. And specifically, we want DIVA gridding. DIVA stands for Data Interpolating Variational Analysis. And so this is going to interpolate, it's going to take the data that we have and interpolate uh, a section profile for it. Um, and so let's start there. We will hit OK. And you can see exactly what that output looks like. So uh, for the areas where there are data, um, you get this um, <laughs> sort of truncated uh, map here. But, you know, if you have a more uniform um, uh, region, uh, particularly if you have a bathymetry file, this looks sort of silly because um, we're hitting the bottom here, um, but I don't have bathymetry to actually show you. Uh, but nevertheless, you can see how the Diva uh, gridding has worked. You can still see the original CTD casts. You can select them, but they're pretty small. So we're going to change that. We're going to go back into properties and down here, you can see the data mark style. If you don't want any markers in your plot, you can just deselect this and that takes them away. They're sort of ghost um, points, but they don't actually plot onto the graph. But if we do want marks, uh, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger and you can see them here. Uh, I do typically keep the data marked just for data transparency, just so people can see exactly what data is being used to interpolate the field that they're seeing. Um, so we can also add contour lines. So to do that, we go to this contour window here and we can decide where we want the contouring to start, where we want it to end, um, the line thickness. So for instance, I'm going to change this to medium. A uh, few labels is pretty typical. And so when I'm ready, I'm going to hit uh, this arrow here. So when I hit okay, it has added those contour lines to the plot. Uh, obviously the medium line is a bit much, so let's change that. So the easiest way to do that is actually just to select all of your defined contours and we just throw them back. So this time we're going to keep them as very thin and we're going to try that again. Now when I hit okay, it has changed the contour lines to the very thin option, which is a lot more aesthetically pleasing. The other thing you can do is you can change the color mapping. 
And so you can, right now, all of the colors are mapped linearly, which means that there is a set number of values assigned to each color. The other way that you can do this is you can hit this auto adjust button. What this does is it creates, it essentially calculates the z-score of each of your data values and scales the color mapping accordingly. Um, this is going to give you a lot clearer uh, data view. Uh, I tend to do this. Just be sure you report that when you are creating your figures. So I'm going to hit OK, and you can see that it pulls out the variation a bit better than just the raw data. The last thing you can do is, as I've said before, you can change the palette. So if we want to make this a bit more, um, you know, colorblind friendly, we can do something like the blue, green, red, or blue only would be kind of the best option. If I hit OK, uh, it changes it to this. And then the other thing that you can do is if you go here, um, you can specify the color bar settings here. Uh, in particular, let's say I have this blue color palette and I'd like the dark blue to specify zero as opposed to 30. I can hit reverse range and it will do that. Again, if you you know, dislike any of the changes that you make at any point, you can always go back up here and hit undo to reverse what you've done. And then let's say you want to export this. So you're going to go onto your section. You can right click and you can hit save plot as. You can specify the name as well as the file type. So if you want PNG, uh, a GIF, a JPEG, a TIFF, um, you can export like that. So let's say I want this exported as tutorial one. I can hit save and it opens up this window to allow you to specify um, which DPI, what DPI you'd like it to export as, essentially what resolution you'd like it to export as. So I tend to export at, at least 800 DPI if this is for a publication. Um, it takes up a bit more space, but it looks better. And so you can also specify whether you want it to export with a transparent background. Um, otherwise, it just fills it in with white. And then you can hit OK. And once you find your file where it was exported, uh, this is going to be uh, the PNG file that we exported. So you can see it's really good resolution, um, high confidence in, you know, it exported exactly what it looked like in the window. Uh, and so this is what I tend to do. And then I construct my actual final figures using a program like Adobe Illustrator um, or another type of image manipulation program um, to put them all together and to make sure that they all look good. So in conclusion, Ocean Data View is a pretty powerful uh, graphical user interface, pretty powerful figure making tool. Um, what I've shown you with the section profile is pretty much applicable to most other views. Um, for instance, we also could potentially do a surface view. Um, if you right click, go to properties, you can also hit that same gridded field. Um, and create some really cool surface plots that way as well. All right, so play around with it. There's a lot of different options, but hopefully this tutorial helps you get started.